and we should be live. Um, how you guys doing? Uh, my name is Zach Evans, and this is the first live stream we are doing for piano. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Um, all right. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, I'm. I'm. This is my first piano live that I'm doing live lesson on YouTube live. I've done webinars. I've done stuff like that. And I really want to start doing YouTube lives and Facebook lives and kind of giving you guys a chance to really ask questions and give you guys some kind of feedback. So today I'm basically going to go over the Become a Piano Superhuman complete training plan. We're officially starting at nine o'clock. So we got about two minutes until we start. Um, I hope this all works out. This is, like I said, this is my first time doing YouTube live. So a lot of today is going to be making sure too that you guys can hear the microphone. Hopefully you guys can hear my voice right now. You know, feel free to leave a chat in the comment and look like, looks like I already got somebody saying hello, superhuman piano from, uh, NTD sport and music. So how's it going? I'm, I'm glad I can see you. We got Milo, the original bro. Hey Zach, how you doing, man? Um, so yeah, we're going to start in about two minutes. Hopefully, let me know if you guys can see my screen right now. It should be my face in the screen share. I can also switch to my face and then I can also switch to the piano. So hopefully you guys can see the piano as well. Um, we got Cesar. Cesar, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right. Do you like guitar? I do like guitar. I actually have a, a guitar right there back in my corner right there. I do play guitar as well, um, but I'm definitely much better at piano, piano than guitar. So we got T Tia on here, we got Tanya, we got Ella. Thank you guys so much. I'm excited to get started with you guys on this. Um, and we're gonna start in about one minute now. And looks like we got a lot of people on the chat. So uh, I'm looking forward to doing these YouTube lives because what I'm realizing is, you know, a lot of people go through the videos, but maybe there's just like one question you have. And you're like, Zach, I get this 100%. But the only thing I don't get is this small little detail, and I wish you could just answer the question for me, you know, on the screen, but obviously you can't, and I don't want anything that's, you know, holding you back, holding you back within that. So, I'm hoping that these YouTube lives, you know, maybe I'll do some kind of weekly thing. Uh, looks like we got Lee Dong, Dong Hoon. Uh, is this live? Yes, this is live. Um, so... Yeah, I, I know a lot of people, you know, maybe you, YouTube Live is confusing to me. It's like, I don't, because you sometimes you can click on a video and it says YouTube Live, but it's a recording of a live video that was done before. And maybe when you're watching this, you know, right now, it's Sunday, 9 o'clock on July 26th. So if you're watching this right now, then it's live. But maybe you might be watching the replay later on and it might not be live. But for now, this is actually live. All right, so... It is 9 o'clock, so I think we'll just get started. This is going to be a kind of test run through this. Hopefully, this all works out. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this. Um, feel free, as I go through this, let me know in the comments, is there anything that's annoying? Is is there anything where you can't hear my voice or you can't see the screen or there's some kind of glitchiness? Um, you know, I want to make sure that, that we get through this and all the technical side gets worked out. And then when I do these in the future, everything will just be, you know, locked and loaded. All right, so this is streaming on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, looks like we have more people on YouTube, though, at the moment. All right, and Ella, I'll get to your question at the end. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through this first, and then I'll get through questions later on. All right, so this is the Become a Piano Superhuman Complete Training Plan Overview. So this is kind of like, okay, when you sit down to the piano... If you want to get really good at piano in a really short amount of time, you want to have a training plan, right? And we all know this concept, right? We all go to the gym or work out or whatever. And yeah, you could just go to the gym and just, you know, wing it and kind of go around and maybe do some bicep curls and do some tricep things and run on the treadmill. But if you have an actual plan where you're like, okay, this is a plan that's worked on hundreds of people and hundreds of people have lost weight using this plan. If you follow the plan, you're going to get the same results, right? And the same thing happens for piano. Now, most people that I know, most beginners, they go into the piano and their only plan is, I'm going to practice for 30 minutes a day, you know, something like that. Or maybe if they're a little more advanced, maybe it's like, okay, I'm going to do scales for 10 minutes a day, and then I'm going to do songs for 20 minutes. And that's the complete extent of their plan. And yeah, you can get better at piano that way. 
It's just going to be, you're just going to drag it out though. And you're not, you know, it's going to take a lot longer. It's going to be a lot more frustrating and it's not going to be dialed in and, you know, laser focused as it is, you know, if you have some sort of plan. And by the way, I'm going to go over this plan and I'm not saying you have to use this exact plan down to a T. Um, this is the one I've always used. I know it works. It's been proven time and time again. So I suggest you use at least something similar to this plan. Um, but this is the plan that works for me. But the most important thing is you have something that works for you. All right. Um, so let's get on to the actual plan itself. I'm just going to go in the comments real quick. Make sure there's, there's nothing else I need to answer. We got a lot of people in here. We got Ella, Rambeer, Sydney, uh, Oh yeah, Louis Tapuanchi, man. I wish I could pronounce your names. I'm sure I'm just absolutely, you know, butchering your guys' names. Uh, thank you so much, Lee, for the compliment. I, I'm glad you're enjoying the lessons and everything like that. All right, so let's get started with the training plan overview. So the basics of the training plan overview is there's three main aspects of piano when we break it down that we have to learn. The physical side, the mental side, and the emotional side. So I want you to ignore this green right here, the efficiency, we're gonna talk about that later. But we got the physical side, which is technique, the mental side, which is music theory, playing by ear, sight reading, that sort of stuff. And then the emotional side, which is typically we work on this when we're playing songs. So basically, let's go over these one by one. So the physical side is, okay, can you actually get your fingers, your wrists, and your hands to move smoothly and fast enough to be able to play the notes. Now, if you ever, if you have a problem with the physical side, and I know a lot of students that do this because they never work on their technique. And this happens a lot when people, um, they get these apps that have these little light up notes and they look really cool and they memorize a lot of songs because they're just learning, memorizing notes to a bunch of different songs. But oftentimes these people play and it doesn't sound smooth right it's like they're playing the exact correct notes at the exact correct time but it sounds choppy oftentimes people say they feel stiff they have trouble just kind of letting go and letting the music play themselves it, it feels like you're really trying to play every single note and if you have that problem likely you have a lack of the physical side of piano you have a lack of technique so what we do is every day we work our technique first to make sure every day we're getting a little bit better at technique. All right, second, we have the mental side of piano. That's music theory, that's playing by ear, that's sight reading. Okay, so this is saying maybe you have the physical side down and you can move your hands and your fingers fast enough, but you don't know what notes to play, right? And that's where it comes into music theory and playing by ear and sight reading. And this, a lot of people have this issue where maybe their technique is really good, but it takes them forever to learn a song, you know? And let me know if this is you in the comments. I want you guys to be thinking through which of these aspects is, is the tough part for you, you know what I mean? Um, and a lot of people, you know, it, it's like they try to learn a song and it takes them like weeks and weeks to learn a song. And even after they learn the song, you know, a month later, they can't even remember it. And likely if you're having these issues, you're having an issue with the mental side of piano. All right, and the last side is the emotional side on piano. And this part is a little bit more, you know, fun to practice. And this is usually happens when you're practicing songs. And if you don't have the emotional side, and you've probably heard people who play like this, maybe you play like this, where you're playing the exact right notes, you're playing at the exact right timing, right? And everything's good, your technique is good, but it's just missing that it factor. Right? And you hear somebody else play the exact same notes on YouTube and you're like, man, this person plays and I feel like my eyes are tearing up and I'm about to cry because it's that emotional. Right. But when I play it, it kind of sounds robotic. It kind of sounds um, like like it doesn't really connect with you emotionally. And if you're missing this aspect of your playing, you're probably likely missing the emotional side of your playing. So basically the concept of this is every day when we sit down at the piano, we want to work all three aspects. We want to work our physical aspect, our mental aspect, and our emotional aspect. That way every day we're hitting every aspect of piano that we want to work on. Now a big mistake people make 
is they just binge on one of the things. And the biggest one people binge on is the emotional side. And what they do is they sit down at the piano and they take songs they already know and they just practice them over and over and over and over because it's fun and they can kind of get into the music. But now they're completely ignoring the physical and the mental side, right? And, and like anything else in life, we learn better when we do a little bit every day, right? If you do a little bit of technique every day, you know, over the long term, your technique's going to get really good. If you do a little bit of, you know, ear training or sight reading or whatever, the mental side that you want to work on every single day, that part is going to get really good. You know, just like dieting or working out, right? It's not about going on some crash diet and dieting, you know, not eating for an entire week, because then you're just going to get super hungry and you're just going to binge eat later on. It's about developing a lifestyle where every day your diet is really good or every day you do that 30 to 45 minutes of exercise. Well, of course, it's, you know, the same way with piano. It's going to work the exact same way. All right. So let's start going through this step by step to show you guys exactly what to do. But first, I want to go in the comments, see if we have any questions. All right. Thank you guys for all the compliments. I'm really glad. It sounds like you guys like like the style of teaching uh, Juan and Surya. So, so, you know, definitely thank you for that. So Surya says, hi, I want to play by ear training. Please give the 50% offer to me. So if you guys know, don't know that, if you sign up for the free Become a Piano Superhuman course, uh, basically you can get 50% off to any of the premium courses late, uh, within the first week. So... I'll put the link to the free Piano Superhuman course in there for you guys in case you're interested in signing up. And uh, it explains kind of like exactly what to do. And actually, I got to figure out how to comment. Here we go. All right. So there's the link I just put in the comments if you guys are interested in signing up. Lee says, will training finger strength with finger grippers help? Uh, Lee, not really. So there's a lot of kind of a little bit like gimmicky um, finger strength exercise things that you can kind of like squeeze to improve your finger strength. There's two problems with this. One, piano is a very specific finger strength, right? So it's not like you just have this bar of how good your finger strength is and the stronger your fingers get, um, the better you can play piano. It's a very specific way you press down a key. Uh, so finger grippers aren't really super helpful from that standpoint. The other reason is, we call it finger strength, but most of finger strength technically is actually coordination um, because there's not actually muscles in your fingers. The muscles are in your forearms and then they attach to your uh, fingers through tendons. So technically we're developing forearm strength, which leads to your fingers. But the reality is most of your finger strength on piano actually comes from basically you being able to move in a better motion and to use your wrist and your forearms and your shoulders in a way that allows you to press down notes easier. So it feels like your fingers are getting stronger, but in reality what's happening is you're just getting really, really efficient at pressing down notes in a way that's really smooth. So it feels like finger strength, but it's not literally building up muscles in your fingers. All right, hope that makes sense. Um, and let's see if we got any other questions. I have a piano keyboard for a week and I can go up and down the keyboard with both hands and I have learned the beginnings of Clocks by Coldplay. Is that any good after a week? Yeah, after a week of practice, that's that's absolutely good. You know, good start. But if you start using um, this training plan, I think you can make even better progress and even faster progress. All right, so let's start going through the actual steps of this training plan. All right, so again, we're gonna skip this efficiency section for now, we're gonna come back to this later. So first things first, we have the physical side of your piano practice, five to 15 minutes, you want to be doing a technique booster, what I call workout plan. So basically you want to work on your technique for five to 15 minutes. Now there's four specific exercises I recommend for beginners, and then once you basically past this level, then you move on to the advanced section where there's basically five exercises that are a little more advanced. And each of these exercises is specifically designed to hit a certain aspect of your technique, right? So we have finger strength, we have finger control, we have uh, relaxation, and, and basically each of these is a drill that you do every day 
And as you do these drills day in and day out, it's going to improve your piano technique. Now, there are some people out there that say, you don't need to do technique drills, you know, just play songs and work on your technique through songs. And it's true, you can do this, but in my opinion, it's a lot harder to do because these exercises are specifically designed to hit a certain aspect of your technique and you can focus 100% on that aspect of technique. Whereas when you're playing songs, you're focusing on learning the notes, you're focusing on the dynamics, you're focusing on putting emotion into it. And it's harder to really drill down and isolate a certain technique and work on it. So that's why I absolutely recommend going through these exercises every single day four, five to 15 minutes before you practice. Now, if you want more information on these exercises, you know, this video, I'm not going to go in depth on all these exercises. It'd be like a, a four hour long video. So you can sign up for the Become a Piano Superhuman course. I put that in the chat if you're interested in going more in depth into these exercises. All right. So after the physical side, what you want to do is you want to spend another five to 15 minutes going over the mental side of piano. Now, this means music theory, ear training, or sight reading. And you choose which of these to do based on which genre of music you're most interested in learning. Now, traditional piano lessons, they have everybody learn how to sight read. And, you know, it kind of makes sense for kids because kids are like, they don't know what genre they want to play. They just want to sit down at the piano and they want to play Mary Had a Little Lamb and they'll be happy. But if you're an adult learner or you have specific goals, or you're like, I want to learn blues. I want to learn pop. I want to learn jazz, right? All these genres, these more contemporary genres, you're better off learning music theory and ear training than you are sight reading, right? If you're in a band and the guitar player is like, yo, dude, I just got this new riff. Can you put a keyboard part to it? He's not going to go print off sheet music and give you sheet music to read, Right? You're going to have to know how to play by ear so you can hear his riff, you can figure out what key it's in, and then you can develop a piano part that matches up with exactly what he's uh, going over. Right, like it, it, it doesn't make sense to really spend a lot of time on sight reading. Now, on the other hand, if you're learning classical music or you're playing like for a church choir, right, where they always give you the sheet music, you're going to have to learn how to sight read. Right, because the choir conductor is going to be up there and he's going to say, all right, everybody, we're going to start at measure number 56. And you have to go in your music, find measure number 56, and know how to start exactly right there. You can't do that if you just know how to play by ear. So, basically, the, the concept is, if you're learning classical, if you're learning um, playing with a choir, that type of stuff, if you're learning um, advanced... Uh, movie trailer music, that kind of stuff, you're going to have to learn how to sight read. There's no way around it. And you're also going to want to learn music theory because no matter what you learn, music theory is always important. If you want to learn blues or jazz or pop music or contemporary music, you're better off learning to play by ear and learning music theory. Uh, you're going to be able to learn songs a lot faster and you're going to be able to play in a band and stuff like that. All right, so for the mental side, we have five to 15 minutes working on the mental side. So you wanna pick which one of these fits best with your personal um, goals and your personal genre, and you wanna spend five to 15 minutes working on these. So for music theory, we have theory lessons, exercises, and quizzes. Same thing with ear training, ear training lessons, exercises, and quizzes. And for sight reading, we have the three-step sight reading process and scaffolded sight reading material. I don't have time to go super in-depth into this, but like I said, uh, feel free. I'll put, I'll put the Piano Superhuman course, the free course, in the chat, and you guys can get more info if you're interested in that. I don't mean to be <laughs> plugging the free course. By the way, before I go on, uh, some people, they're like, you know, dude, you're just trying to sell me something. And I would just want to clear this up real quick. Look, I have a free Piano Superhuman course. It is 100% free. It's not a free trial. It's not, hey, free, but you actually owe me later on. Like, no, it's just 100% free. I just give it away. And it's not some BS course that's trying to get you to sell, a, uh, to buy a product. There's literally 21 free lessons. Um, a lot of the lessons are taken straight from my premium courses. So it's not like it's like, cheap lessons it's like if you want to get the free material by all means use all the free material i also do have premium courses for sale look you know 
Piano is my passion. This is what I love to do. I spent so much time developing this method, teaching it to students and learning piano. So, of course, I want to make a living off it. You know, I don't want to work at McDonald's or something. And, and so I have the premium courses available too, but I don't want you guys to feel pressured to buy a premium course if you don't want to. If you don't have money, if you're a college student, maybe you're retired, you're on a fixed income, you know, feel free, use the free the free courses. I'm not gonna be mad and say like, uh, you use the free courses and you just use me for that. You didn't buy my paid course. Like that's fine. You know, if you just use the free courses, Great, I helped somebody else learn piano. If you buy the paid course, then you're also helping support me as a piano teacher. So I feel like it's a win-win scenario. Uh, so th that's all I wanna say, cause I do plug my free course a lot. And sometimes people don't understand that it really is 100% free. All right, so next in the training plans, so we got our physical, our technique plan, and then we got five to 15 minutes on our mental side of music. And now we work on our actual songs. So this is where these practice blocks come in. So what a lot of people do is they just say, okay, I'm going to work, you know, 30 minutes on my song. And the problem is what happens is they go into their song and they kind of just waffle around their song for a long time. And they don't really, they don't really focus in and narrow in on one part of their song to work on. So instead what we want to do is we want to break our song up into blocks, right? And we have section A of our song, we have section B, we have section C, section D, all, all the way down to the end of your song. Maybe it ends at section Q. And we only want to focus on one block at a time. We want to focus on that block for five to 15 minutes. And once that five to 15 minutes is over, you move on to your next block. And it's really important that you don't um, kind of cheat the system and go and work on a bunch of blocks within this first 15 minute block because that way you're not really learning anything you're kind of just waffling around between different parts of your song it's way more efficient to learn if you say okay i'm just going to take these two measures and i'm just going to drill these two measures for 15 minutes right and then i'm going to go to the next you know these four measures and i'm just going to drill these four measures for five to 15 minutes now, as we're working on these blocks, we also have these accelerated learning strategies. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past, this is stuff like the rhythms technique, the added note strategy, the, the metronome ramp up technique, all these strategies that basically use the science of how our brain works to help you learn piano faster. Again, I don't have time to go in depth into these, but if you want to learn all about these, I have a whole section in the free Become a Piano Superhuman course, so you can uh, learn all of that in the free course. All right, and then lastly, we have another physical cool down, and that's another one to five minutes. This is an optional section where you can go back to your technique and just work your technique from one to five minutes. Just like when you're working at the gym, you wanna do a cool down. Um, I think it's very beneficial to do another cool down with technique where you just take whatever your whatever aspect of your technique needs the most work and you just do one to five minutes of a very relaxing cool down. All right. So that's basically the whole plan. And we'll talk about this efficiency thing in a sec. So just to recap, you do five to 15 minutes of your technique drills, five to 15 minutes of your theory, ear training or sight reading exercises, and then you do practice blocks. And you can do, you know, typically these are five to 15 minutes and you can do as many of these as you want until you kind of run out of practice time. And you can do a one to five minute cool down where you work on your technique drills one last time. All right, so now let's start talking about this efficiency section that I'm talking about. So basically this isn't an aspect of piano per se. This is basically just saying, okay, all of these things that we're learning, the physical, the mental, and the emotional side, how can we learn all of these faster, right? So every day you're getting, you know, a day and a half worth of practice with only one actual day's time of practice, if that makes sense. So this is stuff like setting very clear, specific goals, stuff like using accelerated learning techniques, basically just taking one to five minutes before your practice session and really planning out exactly what you're gonna work on and what you're gonna do. Again, if you want the details of this, this is the goal setting and song mapping section of the Piano Superhuman course um, and the links in the chat box. I don't know, do these chats disappear? Let me know. Can you guys just scroll up and always see all the chats? Um, let me know because I'm, you know, I'm kind of, 
I don't know if I should keep putting the link in there for you guys because I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, okay, Zach, this is cool, but how do I actually do this stuff, you know? Um, so let me know in the chat box if if you can see all the chats and kind of like scroll up. Um, all right, so that's the efficiency at the beginning. And then there's also a, an efficiency section at the end of reflection where you basically say, okay, I just practiced today for whatever, 30, 45 minutes. Let me just take one to five minutes and actually go back and say, hey, what did I do well and what needs improvement? In other words, you just practice. So you, maybe you say, okay, I wasted a lot of time going through stuff that doesn't matter, you know? Or maybe you say, hey, I actually was really, really focused today, but I could, you know, and, and maybe something went well. And maybe you said, hey, I used the rhythm strategy and it worked like gangbusters. And now all of a sudden my scales almost instantly went from slow to fast. Let me use this every single time I practice, right? And what this does is you journal on it, right? And then, and it one to five minutes, you know, it could be anywhere from a sentence to a small paragraph. And then the next day, when you start your efficiency section up here, the first thing you do is you read your journal from the last practice session, right? So that way you can see, hey, the last time I was learning piano, um, I messed up because I spent way too much time practicing songs I already know. I'm not gonna make this mistake this time. And maybe last time I did the rhythm strategy, it worked so well. I'm gonna use the rhythm strategy a ton more in this practice session, all right? And that way it's like, it's like your practice sessions get better and better and better every time you do them, right? And it kind of spirals up because it's like every single day you're just tightening the screws more and more. And if you do this uh, this training plan for a month and every day you're journaling, by the time you're a month in, your practice sessions are just going to be freaking laser focused, right? You're gonna be able to just sit down and just, just grind and every single minute of your practice session is going to be efficient and it's going to be really moving you forward in your piano journey. All right, so that's basically the entire Become a Piano Superhuman training plan. Um, I'm looking in the comments and yes, you guys are saying that you can scroll and see the the other the other comments. So that's good. I guess I can just you know put links in there one time for you guys. All right, so actually actually I should also put a link to the PDF of this. Let me see if I can find a link to the PDF of this so you guys can download it. Uh, I don't I don't actually know if I have that off top. Uh yeah, I don't have it. Okay, so next time I do this uh this presentation, I'll actually have a link to that. If you if you do sign up for the Piano Superhuman training plan, um the download link is in there so you can go ahead and just download this for yourself. All right, so now I'm going to go in the comments. I'm going to start answering questions. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. There is a bit of a delay, okay? So just letting you guys know, if you ask a question, um, it might take like 30 seconds before it actually pops up on my screen. So feel free to answer, to ask any questions. Also, if you have any feedback, I would really, really appreciate it. If you're like, Zach, dude, you, you talk too much about XYZ or Zach, you're putting your link in there too much. We don't really care. Just teach us piano or Zach, you know, whatever it is, or Zach, like we couldn't hear the microphone, whatever it is, leave any feedback you have. And I'm going to start going through the comments and answering any questions. I'm going to kind of stop, start more from the top. All right. All right. This one is from Ella Murphy. Um, for your blues piano song, is there different left hand combos you can play? All right, so this is specifically on my blues piano course or my blues uh, uh, free piano lesson on YouTube. And I will put the link to that just in case you guys are interested. So when I ask the question, answer the question, if you guys are interested in blues, um, I actually have two lessons. So this first link is the, imp oh, shoot, I'm doing the wrong thing is the improvised lesson right here. And then I'm gonna do another link for the left-hand pattern lesson. So to answer your question, yes, there you can do a ton of different blues improv patterns. Um, let me just go to my actual piano here. Um, hopefully you guys can hear the piano and see the piano. You know, let me know in the comments. So blues, the one I teach is just this. Or I'll do it down here. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Can you do it four times? All 
All right, and I don't want to go too much in depth into blues, but basically it's just four notes. So it's C, B, G, and A. And you just repeat it four times, and you move the whole thing up to F. You repeat it two times, back to C two times, and then up to G and F, and then back to C. And this is basically the 12 bars blues progression. Now, this pattern, you can use any blues left hand pattern. So, another common one is this. You guys have probably heard that. You can do this. And all these, you can just look up, you know, common blues left hand patterns. But the improv is all the same. So, if you're losing the blues scale, and you can learn that in the improv lesson if you're curious. Um, but it's it's the exact same notes no matter what pattern you're using. So if I'm doing this Or if I'm doing this No matter what left hand pattern you're using you can use the same notes in your right hand because that's that's kind of just how improvisation works all right, so hope that answered your question. Let me go back to the screen share and go down to the next question. So, and Ella, let me know in the comments if that if that answers the question um, that you had. Sounds so crispy, dude. All right, next question is from. Can I use a cheap keyboard to practice? All right, so, okay, here's the thing. So like I said, there's the physical, the mental, and the emotional side. The mental side and the emotional side, you could do on any keyboard, right? Because it's just what notes are you playing. But the physical side, you're not gonna be able to do unless you have a keyboard with what's called weighted keys. And it's super, super important that you get one of these as soon as possible. And weighted keys just means when you press down the key, there should be a little resistance coming up. In other words, the keys should be weighted. Now, the super, super cheap keyboards out there are not weighted. So basically, you press a note down and it instantly just goes all the way to the bottom. And there's no weight to it. And you're not going to be able to develop uh, good finger strength and good technique that way. So I highly suggest you get a keyboard as soon as possible. I'll put a link to my keyboard buyer's guide um, with my suggestions on what keyboards to get. There's basically different suggestions on depending on your price range, and I'll put that uh, right there. But that being said, um, if you don't have a lot of money, the best thing to do is just go on Craigslist, and oftentimes people are giving away pianos for free. And there will be upright pianos. They might not be in really good tune, but it's better to play on that than to have a, a keyboard without weighted keys because you're not going to develop really good um, physical strength and stuff like that. So if you don't have money, go on Craigslist, see if you, there's a free piano out there for you. Oftentimes, if you just help them move it, they're just trying to get rid of it. All right, next question. Milo said I learned the four chords in one hour. So that was in the the uh, four chords video. That's one of the most popular ones. Um, so great, Milo. Awesome. One hour is definitely a, a good time, time frame. All right. Vishal Pal says, when should we move toward the mental side as a beginner? Is it good to just go both physical and mental right from the beginning? Uh, so the answer is, yeah, you want to be working on everything if you can right from the beginning. That being said, maybe the first like week or two, maybe if you don't have a lot of practice time, you say, okay, first week or two, I'm just going to work on the physical side until I kind of have these exercises memorized. So I don't have to like look up the videos and make sure I'm doing all the form right. And it's kind of just like, you know, in your, in your subconscious, you know, and then you can move on to the mental side and say, okay, my physical side, I kind of have my routine down pat. Let me add some, you know, music theory drills. Let me add some ear training. Let me add some sight reading, that kind of stuff. But you can start everything right away as a beginner for sure. All right. All right, Lee says, request, could you upload a video for various scales for technique mastery? It'd be very helpful if I can check whether I'm practicing with proper uh, pose and fingering. Okay, so... Basically, for scales, I'm going to link first 
the Dominate Your Piano Skills webinar. That's the main piano webinar that I use uh, for scales. So let me just find that first. Scales. Here we go. So put that in the chat. So that'll basically, I mainly go through the C major scale and it'll tell you the correct form, the correct motion, and the correct accelerated learning techniques for scales. And then if you wanna move on to different scales, I have a cheat sheet that has all the major scales. Um, and I will link that, where's my scales cheat sheet? Here we go, two octave major scales with fingerings. And I'll put that in there for you. So that way you can kind of, and you use the same form and the same motion, the same technique, in other words, for all your scales, the same accelerated learning techniques. It's just you're playing different notes. So hope that makes sense. All right, next question. I'm too old to practice piano and still love to read music. All right, you're never, this is a chick music theory. You're never too old to learn piano. Trust me, when I taught in Nashville, I had this group of students, I called them my retired go-getters. And they were literally all retired people. And some of them learned faster than my kids learned because they went in it and they, you know, some people retire and they're just saying, you know, I'm just gonna watch TV all day and relax and, and sit on my porch and read the paper and stuff. And then there's another group of retired people that say, you know, I'm retired. Finally, I have time to learn all the things I wanted to learn. And they're excited. Like some of these 60 year olds would come in and it was motivating for me seeing how excited they were to learn piano. And you can absolutely learn piano even if you start at 60, 65. And on my success stories page with the Piano Superhuman course, there are a ton of elderly people, people who are retired, people are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, who are like, look, I started learning from the piano for the first time and I started the Piano Superhuman course and now I can play piano. So definitely don't get, um, don't get too discouraged if you're older. You can absolutely learn. Uh, the whole, you can't teach an old dog new tricks thing, that's all a myth and it's been debunked time and time again. All right, let's go on to the next question. answer all right how to improve your left hand for playing piano this one comes from uh vera draj patil i'm sure i pronounced her name 100 wrong i apologize for that so for your left hand you know a, a big thing that people are missing is they're simply missing technique and the thing is with your right hand it's a little bit easier to get away with it if you're right-handed because your right hand is naturally more coordinated but if you have bad technique you can get away with it with your right hand, but it's very apparent in your left hand. And the biggest thing is to take these technique booster exercises and make sure every day you're doing them. And of course, do them with your right hand and your left hand. Uh, but one thing you can do is you can start with your left hand and practice all these with your left hand first. Because the bottom line is whatever you're practicing first, oftentimes you focus better, you know, you're practicing harder, and so if you start with your left hand first every single day when you practice, that can help kind of close the gap between your left hand and your right hand. All right, hope that makes sense. All right. I already know how to play piano. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, Glenn Davis said, sir, please answer my question. I must have missed that question. All right, here's one from Madhen Kumar. Zach, I lose my cool very easily while playing a song. Any advice on how to stay focused through the throughout the learning process? All right, so I'm not sure if you're talking about when you're practicing piano or if you're talking about when you're actually playing piano in front of an audience, uh, which are two different things. If it's when you're practicing piano, um, honestly, I think using a plan like this can help you a lot because that way you're not scatterbrained and going from one thing to another thing and getting stressed out. You can just say, okay, I'm just going to take, you know, five to 15 minutes. I'm going to set my timer. I'm just going to work on the technique drills and I'm just going to trust that the process is going to work. And a lot of times when people get frustrated and they get overwhelmed with piano, it's because what happens is there's so many different aspects to focus on, right? There's scales, there's songs, there's there's learning technique drills, there's learning music theory, there's playing by ear, and they keep jumping 
to different ones and it's kind of this ADD way of learning. And what happens is you never um, can just really focus on one and that leads to kind of anxiety about, am I learning everything? Should I be doing more? But if you really follow a plan, you just trust, okay, this plan has been used by hundreds of students it works. If I just follow the plan, I can take a deep breath, I can relax, and I know it's going to work. Now, if you're talking about playing in front of an audience, that's a much bigger lesson. I have a lesson to that, the seven-step method to dominating your performance anxiety. I'm just going to link to that in the comments for you guys if you're interested in that. All right, let's go on to some of these other questions. So we got, is a 61 key piano sufficient for beginners? 100% yes. Honestly, I hardly ever use the very top keys and the very bottom keys on piano. Most songs, you never have to play that. Worst case scenario, if you do have to play those keys, you can just move down an octave. So for example, let me go to my piano. You know, if you're playing a song and you have to play, you can't even see these keys, you know, way up here, you can just play down here. So if you have a C, you know, and you don't have these keys up here, you can just play. And it's the exact same notes, it's just down an octave. So we're basically just transposing. You could even play down here. So a 61 p uh, key piano is 100% fine, as long as you're, uh, you have weighted keys. That's the big thing when you're, when you're getting a keyboard. Oh, let me go to my screen share again. All right, let's go to other questions. Um, Oh, let me actually go on this screen. I think it's more updated. For a beginner, hoping to learn a lot. Um, how many practice hours should I have daily and uh, constantly to become better? This comes from Saif Barter. So basically, how much should you practice a day? Of course, the answer is kind of like the more you practice, the better. You know, if you practice three hours a day, you're going to get better faster than if you practice 30 minutes a day. Typically, I say a good spot for beginners is around 30 to 45 minutes a day. That's kind of like the, the kind of default answer I get. Of course, if you're really motivated, you can practice longer than that. The big thing, though, is consistency is more important than total time, right? I ha I'd rather have you practice 15 minutes a day, that's it, and do it every single day than to practice like three hours for like four days in a row, get burnt out, and then don't practice for a month. Right? I don't want you to go down that road because that's worse. I'd rather have you consistently at 15 minutes a day. So whatever you can practice consistently, it's kind of the more the better. Now, there are some diminishing returns that happen. And from what I've experienced, the first 45 minutes to an hour, you get a lot out of your practice time because you're able to focus and you have more energy and focus than you do later on. The second hour, uh, you know, hour two to hour three, you can still get a lot done, but it's kind of like your focus isn't as good as it is that for that first hour, right? And even if you take a break in between, that second hour just isn't going to be 100% there. But it's still like you could get stuff done. And honestly, that third hour, if you practice a third hour, which is, you know, a lot of practice time to practice a day. But if, if you are practicing that third hour, and when I was in college practicing for my senior recital, I was absolutely practicing three hours a day. That third hour really... I'm just going over, you know, very small sections. I'm not working on the super, super hard sections of my songs because I just don't have the focus that's necessary to work in that last hour. A lot of times I'll be doing technique drills and working on the physical side because your brain can only handle so much, you know, per day. And from what I've experienced, practicing more than three hours, I'm really not doing anything. At that point, I'm kind of just spinning my wheels. So the short answer is, 30 to 45 minutes is probably a good start for beginner, but consistency is always more important than the total amount of practice time. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the next question. Um, all right, um, this one comes from An Anhali. I think I'm pronouncing that right, hopefully. I'm learning piano mainly because I want to learn classical pieces starting with Moonlight and Lot. Moonlight Sonata, the easy version, seems like a mistake and I should maybe start with easy ones. What should I do? All right. So, of course, the the normal progression is to start with easy songs and then, you know, gradually work on to harder songs. And that's typically what I recommend for people. That being said, 
I will say, if you are a person who's super motivated and super excited about learning a song, what you can do is take a song that's a little bit out of your range and just really, really try to learn that song. But just know it might take you like three months to learn one song. But if you're super, super motivated, you might not care. And you might say, dude, I just want to learn this one song. This is my goal. I'm just going to freaking put the time in and try to learn it. And the thing is, even if you don't end up learning the song, you know, after a whole month went by, it might be kind of frustrating. It might be kind of annoying. Um, but you will get a lot better at piano. So my story on this, I wanted to learn the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Jared Radnich version, which is super crazy. Like he plays these crazy fast arpeggios. He's just blazing up and down the keyboard. And this was like my goal piece. I was like, if I can play this song, I will feel happy with my level at piano. I feel like I made it. You know what I mean? And I literally spent an entire summer, three and a half months working this song to my bones, practicing like two hours a day on it. And at the end of the summer, I still couldn't play the song. I mean, I could play it, but it was just under tempo. It was slower than it's actually supposed to go. It was a little bit sloppy. But that summer, I got so much better at piano. Like, my technique level skyrocketed because I was pushing myself to play this super hard song. And when I went back to all my easier songs, I was like, man, these songs are a piece of cake compared to what I was practicing for. So if you are super motivated, you can take a song that you're like, dude, this is my goal song. I really want to learn this. And you can really, really go for it um, from that standpoint. So I hope that makes sense. All right. Lee says, estimated time for an average person to get good relative pitch to find good as you like, assuming about an hour of ear training every day. So for learning to play by ear, uh, what I define as good is you can learn a song by ear in about 10 minutes. In other words, you hear a song on the radio, and it's not like you instantly sit down at the piano and you can instantly play the song, but maybe after, you know, 10 minutes of kind of figuring this part out and then listening back and figuring this part out, you could learn a about a song. If you practice an hour a day, you could get there in two to three months, 100%. And especially if you're using a very systematic process to learning to play by ear, where you're actually taking... Um, I don't want to get too much into play by ear. I'm going to go on and find a tangent. But the basic theory when you play by ear is, let me go to the piano, is you don't try to learn to play by ear straight from the start with all the notes. You start with just three notes. These three notes, right? And if you go to the piano superhuman course, there's the play by ear lessons. And we have examples where like you hear these three notes and you just have to figure just these three notes by ear, right? So I'll cover up so you can't see the notes and I'll go... And then you have to figure out, okay, he played one, two, three, two, three, right? And once you learn these three notes, then we add a couple more notes. So it's these five notes, right? And then we add a couple more notes. And eventually we get to the point where you know all the notes on the keyboard. Um, so if you're using that kind of system, if you're consistent with it, you can absolutely, with an hour day of practice, you could learn in, in two to three months. Typically, I recommend people do only like 15 minutes a day. And that'll take you like three to four months just because I, I will say ear training is very mentally intensive. Like when you're just listening and you're trying to figure out the note, it works your brain. Like after you're, you're done practicing, you'll, you will feel like wiped out from trying to figure out how to play songs by ear. Um, but once you get good at it, obviously it gets easier and easier like anything else. All right, let's go on to the next question. Um, All right, Ella, I tried your blues song and I can manage to improvise the song for about one minute. Then it becomes hard, too hard and fast. What are some ways that I can improvise and still make it smooth? All right, so, I mean, if you can improvise for one minute, first of all, that's already great. But the thing about improvising is you can play anything, right? So when you're improvising, let me show you some tricks to kind of give you more than one minute. So let me go to the piano. So the basics of improvising is you learn a left hand pattern. You get the left hand pattern in your bones and your right hand, you have certain notes that you can play. So if we're doing blues, we have our blues scale. So these are the available notes to improvise on. So I could be playing.
right? You can play using any of those notes at any time in any rhythm. Now, Ella, if you want to get some more variation, obviously you can just play different patterns. And the first thing you might want to do is just get more patterns under your belt. So just start making up patterns. Maybe one pattern is this. And then you can play it up here. And maybe one pattern is this. And you can just make up any patterns and then keep adding more patterns to your toolbox. The other thing you can do is you can take the same pattern and you can play it on any octave. So if your pattern is this, oh, I messed up. <laughs> you can play it here. Or you can play it up here. Or you can even play it down here if you want, it won't sound as good. Actually, that doesn't sound bad. So you can basically octave jump these patterns anywhere on the keyboard, and then you just continue to learn more patterns. And once you learn more and more patterns and start making stuff up, eventually you start be able to make up patterns on the fly. And that's when true improvisation comes up, where you're really just messing around and kind of playing whatever notes you want. All right, hope that makes sense. Let's go back to the screen share. All right. All right, Ashwin says, what are the top five things to practice in your first 15 minutes of practice every day? All right, so if we go back here, these are the technique booster um, exercises. So here we got the, I'll scroll in, the Miyagi technique, which is the relaxation exercise, the five finger drill, which develops flow, and then we have basic scales, which develops finger coordination, and then the finger gauntlet exercise develops finger strength. These are the ones you want to be focusing on. I think most of you guys in the chat sound like your beginner or beginner intermediate level. Um, there's also some advanced ones. Don't worry about these if you're a beginner. So those are the, I think technique is the most important thing to start with just because if you can't physically play what you want to play, even if you get the mental side down, you know exactly what notes to play, it's just, it's not going to feel smooth. You're not going to be able to play fast enough. You're going to have trouble getting hands together. Like the physical side, once you get that down, everything else gets a little bit easier. So I definitely recommend getting your technique uh, going right from the get-go. All right, let's go on to the next question. Singing, that makes sense. When you start these live classes, is it going to be every day? Probably not every day, Anish. Um, so the plan is, I, I don't really know exactly how long I'm going to be doing these. This is kind of my test one to see, you know, if people like it. Um, and then in the future, it might be once a week. Um, it might be, I might take some time off and then do like a week where I'm doing every day and going super in depth on the technique. Like maybe, maybe next week I say, okay, we're just going to, work on technique and I'm gonna take an entire week and go through these four exercises, you know, one each day of the week. Uh, it's probably gonna be something like that. I don't really know yet. Or maybe I'll do just a weekly question and answer. I'm not really sure yet, but um, if you're signed up for the Piano Superman course, I'll send out an email whenever I'm going live. So then um, you can get, you can make sure you're not missing out on any, any of these. All right. All right, the Dynamite Crafts, can you suggest some 61 key weighted keyboards because I can't find one online? Um, so it's not that 61 keys is better. 88 keys is definitely better than 61 keys. Um, it's just weighted keys is the most important thing. And it says there are 88 keys are quite expensive for me. Um, by the way, your website, of course, it helped me a lot and the a lot, man, and the emails motivates me. Glad that they all helped you out. In terms of price range, Really, if you're getting a keyboard, the lowest price range is about 500 bucks to get a good one with weighted keys, and that's in the keyboard buyer's guide. Um, I haven't found a good keyboard less than 500 bucks. <clears throat> so if your budget is less than 500 bucks, like I said before, you're going to want to hop onto Craigslist and see if somebody in your town is giving away a free piano. Oftentimes people do when they're moving and they just don't feel like dealing with the hassle of moving their piano and they just want to see it going to a good home. So oftentimes 
you can get an upright piano for free. All right, let's go on to the next question. Where will I get to learn piano by ear? So Anish, if you go to the um, Piano Superhuman course, the free one that I linked, there are four lessons on playing by ear and that that'll help you out. Also, I'm going to link a webinar I did a long time ago on playing by ear um, that a lot of people really liked and really helped people out. So I'll put that link also in the chat. All right, Lee says, are they a waste of time? They say college courses for composers, not players. Is that true? Um, so I think you're talking about taking music in college. So I took piano um, at a university, and it depends what you mean by waste of time. I will say, because, okay, I went to college for music, so I spent, what, 50 to 70 grand on tuition. You know, I spent <clears throat> five years every day being immersed in music, and in a sense, it wasn't a waste of time because, I mean, I enjoyed music. This is what I do for a living. This is what I love. So in that sense, it's not a waste of time. That being said, with today's technology, there was a lot of things in college a waste of time. Like, uh, anybody that goes to college will know, like, okay, probably more than half of the things I learned, I've never used a single day in my life. You know, I've had so many gen ed classes I never used. I had to take... Um, you know, random like world geography and just, just random classes you'll never use. A lot of the stuff I learned musically, I never used either. You know, a lot of the, the music theory that I learned in school was, you know, very advanced classical theory that I used a little bit, I guess, when I released my album. So when I composed that, I used it a little bit, but on the day to day, I don't, you know, I, I use pretty much basic theory and maybe intermediate level theory to learn, you know, for chords and keys and left hand patterns. But I don't use a lot of the stuff that I learned in college. Um, I also had a class that covered a bunch of different genres, half the genres I never play, you know, so in a way, college is definitely a very expensive and a very time consuming way to learn music. That being said, I mean, I don't regret it because I got really good at piano, you know, but if, if I was telling somebody what's the most efficient way from a financial standpoint and from a time standpoint to learn piano, it's definitely not going to school for music. So I hope that makes sense. All right. Anish, Anish says, how can I get the rhythm strategy? I'll put a link to the rhythms. That's one of the accelerated learning techniques. I'll put a link to that in the chat. All right. Let's see. I think I might have got most of the main questions. I'm hoping I'm not missing. It's kind of it's kind of annoying because uh, the questions, obviously, the most recent ones show up first, so then I, I don't want to miss any ones from way back, you know. Uh, Ashley said, "What's the best best premium course to start with if you're a beginner?" Um, Ashley, the best one I recommend if you're interested in the premium courses is definitely the technique mastery course. That's the one I always recommend to people. Um, I'll put, I'll put a 50% off link for you guys in the chat if you're interested in getting, cause you could get the 50% off anyway, just by signing up for the piano superhuman free course and then just using the discount, um, within that. All right. I think that's most of the questions I'll stay on for like. A couple more minutes you have, if you have any other questions. If I missed your question, if you could actually just repost it because I must it must have got lost somewhere in the chat. So if you have another question, um, just repost it. Um, Lee says, I'll be satisfied if I can play music in my head and arrange good pieces of music. I'm not going to compose any music. Yeah, Lee, for you, it sounds like probably going to college for music is probably not the best option for you. I just think, you know, going to school for music is really this is going to be my career. You know what I mean? Otherwise it's, I don't think it's, it's worth it. Yeah. A lot of people are saying technique technique. If anybody's had the experience of not having good technique and then doing the 91 day training plan and getting good technique, you know what I'm talking about. Cause you know, you get that feeling where it's like all of a sudden the, the keyboard feels like it's your home, you know, and it doesn't feel like you're stressing and, and, and trying to play notes. Your fingers just kind of it almost feels like your fingers kind of snap to the notes and it's very relaxing and it's a very, you know, it's, it's a good way for playing. Um, so 
And Holly says, will the live sessions be for beginners? Um, most likely, most of them will. Um, I polled my audience recently, and about half of the people were complete beginners, and another 25 to 30% classified themselves as beginner intermediate level. There are very few advanced players. Um, so for advanced players, usually they end up buying the premium courses anyway. Um, and that's where I get into really the advanced stuff. So usually on my YouTube channel and on these lives, I'm probably going to do mostly beginner material. Um, but maybe I'll have some that go into more advanced stuff down the road. <clears throat> Zach, do you practice your technique drills? Absolutely. Um, here's the thing. So after college ended, I went a good, probably like four to five months where I just stopped practicing technique drills altogether. And at first it didn't, it wasn't a big deal. It's like my technique kind of kept up, but then five months later, I'm like, man, my playing's just something's not there. And I was like, I got to go back to the basics. And I started doing my scales again. I started doing the Miyagi technique and I went back through everything. Um, and now honestly, nowadays I don't practice it a lot. Like nowadays I'll do like a five minute warm up just to maintain. Cause once you have good technique and you just got to maintain it, you can just do five minutes a day of, and you can just pick one. You can just do, I'm going to do scales today. Next day I'm going to do the finger gauntlet and you can just maintain your technique and since you're playing songs anyway, like the songs kind of help maintain your technique as well. Um, but I do still do, do uh, five minutes a day of technique before I practice. Um, <clears throat> what, uh, let's see. Every practice session. Yep. And uh, Lee, also my piano professor in college, he also said, he's like, I still do my scales every single day. Like he was, he was the same way. How does your practice routine look? Um, this comes from Tegan. So it looks exactly like this. I still follow this exact routine. The main difference is um, these are very short. So my efficiency probably takes two minutes because I've done it so many times. Technique, I just do five minutes. And then music theory, <coughs> I don't do any more music theory. I've kind of learned everything I need to know. Uh, actually, I don't do ear training either. Um, I'll do a little bit of sight reading usually because sight reading is my weakest point. And the thing about sight reading, like, Ear training, if you're learning to play by ear for like pop songs, once you learned it, you're pro you're pretty much good. Whereas sight reading, and if you're trying to learn classical music, it's like you can always get better at sight reading. Like there's always more advanced songs. And even like, like my piano professor in college, if he had a super hard classical piece, he could sight read it, but oftentimes he'd have to leave out notes or he'd kind of mess up and stuff like that. So you can always kind of get better at sight reading. Like the ceiling is forever. Whereas ear training, you can get to a point where you're kind of like, I'm good. I don't really have to get, you know, after four months, I'm kind of like, you know, you know, I don't really have to get better at playing by ear essentially. And then what I do is I just work on songs uh, for, and usually I take 15 minute blocks for my songs. Um, Typically, the more advanced you get, the longer these practice blocks are going to be for songs. Because even if you're working on a really challenging piece, even two measures you can spend 15 minutes on two measures easily, right? Because you're breaking it down into even smaller sections. You're practicing left hand and, and right hand separately. Um, cool down, I don't always do a cool down. That's just kind of like if I'm in the mood for it. The cool down for everybody is kind of an optional one to five minutes at the end. All right. Um, hey, I'm trying to get a keyboard. Can you tell me some information? Again, I'll link to the keyboard buyer's guide again for you. Um, and that comes from... Uh, C Gamer 290. So I'll do keyboard, keyboard buyer's guide. Put that in the chat. All right. What piano do you own? Okay. So I have, I'll go to the piano. It's in Roland RD 800 keyboard. Um, and this is the keyboard that I have. That being said, this, this keyboard. I don't recommend unless you're like serious, serious, like a gigging piano player. This thing cost me $2,200. It was very expensive, but I mean, this is what I do for a living, right? And whenever I play gigs, like literally if you go to Guitar Center and you're like, I have a professional gig coming up, I, I need to rent a piano. They'll either give you this piano or they'll give you a Nord piano, which is the red pianos that you sometimes see. So this is a very professional piano. If, if, if you're like, I want to be a professional gigging piano player, Highly recommend this piano. Um, I think the new version is actually called the RD2000. I don't think they sell the 800 anymore. I think 
the new version is a 2000 but the 2000 is probably even better than the 800 it's, it's a great piano um so that's the one i use but if you're just learning piano for fun i don't you know don't waste your money on a two thousand dollar piano it doesn't make sense like there's there's pianos for 500 bucks uh or a thousand bucks that that are a lot better or not a lot better but a lot uh that are just fine for everything that you need to be doing um, is there a video explaining each technique on the chart? Yep. Just go to the piano superhuman course. There's a technique section, which has multiple lessons under that, that explains the, uh, the technique booster stuff. Tanya Miyagi technique, please something, say something about that. All right. So the Miyagi technique is a exercise on relaxation. Um, the reason I call it the Miyagi technique is it's a super weird drill where and if you've ever seen the movie, The Karate Kid, basically, uh, there's this guy that wants to learn karate and the karate ma master, his name is Mr. Miyagi. And for the first month, he's having the kid like wax the windows on his car and clean his house and do all these weird stuff. And the kid's like, what the heck does this have to do with learning karate? And then, you know, two months later, all of a sudden he's learning to block punches and the same motion he used to wax the car is to block a punch. And he realizes, oh, this is what... This is the whole point of this technique. So the Miyagi technique, actually I'll link to that specific lesson. Um, it's one of these drills that you're like, what am I doing? This seems like super pointless. Um, but once you actually do it for a couple of weeks, you'll be like, oh, this actually helps my relaxation so much. And it's, in my opinion, the best drill when it comes to relaxation. Um, if you don't want to call it the Miyagi technique, some people call it the free fall exercise. And some people call it the arm relaxation drill. Um, but I like giving things cool names and I know that sounds weird, but I find that people are actually more likely to do the drill if you give it a cool name. And I know that sounds like completely like counterintuitive, like who cares what the name of the drill is, but if you call something the finger gauntlet, it sounds like this is going to make my fingers strong, right? As opposed to if you call it like the finger combinations exercise, it's just people don't remember it as well and people are less likely to do it. So I usually give stuff cool names. All right. All right. It's 10 04. I was planning to end this at 10. So I'm just going to go over a couple more questions and then we're going to finish it out. So, um, Milo said he did, uh, uh, one of the piano progressions sounded really cool. Um, sounded like a high school musical progression. Awesome. Milo. That's, that's good to hear. Thank you for your answer. Lee, the Miyagi technique is actually the most value valuable and most difficult to grasp training yeah lee the miyagi technique it's one of those things like you do it over and over and at first you're like this seems like it makes no sense but once you get it once it clicks you're like oh i get how playing piano is supposed to feel like i understand what you mean by you know relaxation what's your opinion on sheet music this comes from the dynamite craft are they super duper important so this is kind of what i said before that Sheet music is super duper important if you're learning classical music or if you're learning um, to play with a choir. And the reason is classical music is super advanced when it comes to like the chord progressions, right? So if you're trying to learn with chord sheets or you're trying to learn um, by playing by ear, it's really difficult to grasp because every song, every piece of music is so different and uses very complicated chord progressions. On the other hand, if you're learning pop music, right pop music a lot of songs use the exact same four chords so once you hear those four chords your ear will pick up on it and you'll be like oh it's just you know a six four one five progression you know that's a little more advanced you'll understand that once you understand how to play by ear but since there's so many repeated patterns it's much easier to learn pop songs by ear same goes for like blues or jazz right in blues you hear the same left hand patterns over and over again so once you hear that left hand pattern your ear will just know it. You don't need the sheet music, you know? So basically, yeah, if you're learning classical music, learn sheet music. If you're learning pop music, jazz music to play in a band, you're better off learning music theory and ear training in instead. Um, <clears throat> all right, this is going to be the last question I'm going to go with, and then I'm going to call it for today. So this is um, Tangon says, what is your process of getting gigs? All right. So the biggest thing to get gigs is networking. And it's one of those things that it ramps up. Okay. So when you first start networking, obviously it's like, you're putting a lot of time in networking <clears throat> and you're not getting a lot of gigs, right? 
But the more connections you build, and once you start getting gigs, it gets a lot easier. Because then when you're at your gig, then the drummer in the band on the gig is like, hey, I need a keyboardist for this gig that I'm doing over here. And then you go play with his band. And then you meet his guitar player. And his guitar player is like, hey, my my nephew wants to learn piano. Can you teach him piano lessons? And then you get a piano student. And then their parents are like, hey, my my uh, brother is getting married. They need a piano player. Do you want to play for the wedding? So once you get a couple gigs, it's a lot easier to get more. Now, the way I started out when I was in Nashville, um, I literally, I, I grew up in Wisconsin. I went to school in Wisconsin and I moved to Nashville. And I had no contacts in Nashville. I had no connections. So I was kind of starting from scratch. And what I did is I went to the singer-songwriter nights. So there's these nights where basically everybody gets a chance to go up on stage and play like one to two songs. And then the next person goes and then the next person. All right, so I'd go up there and I'd just play a song on piano. And I would just get to know week after week everybody that went to those nights. And then people, you know, anybody that needed a piano track... They had just heard me play time and time again. So I'm their first contact. I'm the first person they're asking. So I started getting little gigs through that. And then, like I said, once you have a couple gigs, it's a lot easier to get more and more gigs. It's just getting started is hard. So being really consistent and going to these open mics every single week was super important. And, you know, the first month I didn't get any gigs from it. I was just going every single week to these things. And then, you know, the gigs started to trickle in. And, and once you get more and more, then it gets a lot, a lot easier. All right. So that's it for today. We've gone over an hour. Um, I hope you guys got a lot out of this, uh, this lesson, this live thing. Let me know if you have any feedback in the comments and I'll take that into account next time I do a live. Um, hopefully I'll do a lot more of these lives. It seems like all the technology and everything like that is working. So I'm kind of excited to, to do more of these lives and to get uh, get you guys, really get your questions answered. And if you have that one thing that's holding you back, let me answer that for you. Let me be here for you as a piano teacher. And let me make sure that you, uh, you're you getting through all your sticking points. All right, that's all I got for you. So thanks a lot for watching. Peace out and happy practicing.